The Raven's Flock presents The Black Files An uncensored interview and review podcast for all geek fandom Welcome everybody, friends and pals, guys and gals, boys and girls around the world. Pop a squat, pop up in a cold one with your boys, or your girls, or your non-binaries. I don't care who, as long as you enjoy yourself, even if you enjoy yourself by yourself. And I don't mean that way. Actually, oh, you know does. what? You know what? You could enjoy yourself that way. I don't give 100%. a One hundred percent. I don't give. I don't really care. It's your body. It's your choice. And I'm hoping that you enjoy the choice of listening in to a brand new episode of The Black Files. I'm happy to be back. I'm taking a little bit Shut from Angel's dialogue. Mouth. I'm happy to be here to talk about the things that we like and the things we don't like. Just what? What do you even mean? You shut up, man. That's usually Angel's a thing. Usually he's the one saying it. Hey, man. I'm just sitting here enjoying the fact that Halloween has come and gone. Yeah, go freaking figure. A wonderful time was had by all. Now it's time for everybody to completely... Okay, 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 hang on. So let's see. Uh, everybody guilt-tricked us about Hallow's Eve. Now I gotta sit here and be guilt-tricked about the Indians for the next 30 fucking days until Christmas shows up. Uh, uh, where they will somehow find a way to kill Dr- days. When they will find some way to kill Dreamy or something else. This is Angel Mendes saying, please do try to enjoy the holidays. As the meaning of things has changed, so we must change as well. We cannot forget history, but we can at least try to learn from it. Seriously. Thank you for that, Also, Angel. take your moral righteousness and fucking show, but I'm not going to feel guilty for people that die 500 There goes the fuck bomb. Uh, right. Welcome, folks, to the Uncensored interview. My interview. ancestors died fucking millennia ago, and you don't see me picking a fight with Spain, you bitch. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. We got lit real fast. Holy shit. I am just so sick and tired of that attitude. But you know what? Let us be positive. Oh, my God. We had, we're here to have a good time. It is my little brother's birthday. Yay! Woo-hoo. My little brother is turning 17, and I am very proud of the young man that he's turning into. Oh, Indeed. Yeah, many uh, happy birthdays and many happy returns to Michael. Uh, and, uh, of course, folks, this is the Uncensored Interview and Review Podcast with Raven's Lock, the Raven Black Files. That's, of course, was Angel Mendez giving his salutations and his diatribe. There was Jose Casabona earlier in the beginning trying to steal Angel's uh, opening spiel. You can kill him if you want to. I don't care. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm joking. Please hey, don't Angel, kill people. You're welcome. It's okay. In the spirit of the upcoming Thanksgiving, I don't mind sharing. Oh, that's nice. Aww. And of course, this I've is one. I've been killing you and taking over your land. <laughs> Not if I kill See, you. now I get to do it too. Oh, Not if I kill fuck. you first. Hey, man, I'm a minority, but I'm Spanish. That means that I'm not white enough to take privilege, and I'm not black enough to play the victim all the time. I got to grab onto something. Oh, my I'm God. also Hispanic. Not Hispanic enough. You're half Hispanic. You're a filthy half-breed. <laughs> no, Jose's fully Hispanic. Not He's a just drop American. of demon blood in your veins. <laughs> what the fuck? First the day you were born. <laughs> All right. Let's, oh, my let's God. Bring it. Let's dial it back. We got to let Juan give our... Yeah, no, we, right, can, right, we actually right. get... Okay, can we fucking focus up? Of go course, on, you guys on. can tell. Really uh, we're actually we're really going back. to be... Uh, give, on this episode of The Black Files, we're actually going to be giving our uh, brief as possible review and retrospective on the fervor and the horror that people tried to gin up uh, about the Joker movie that came out in October, directed by Todd <laughs> Phillips and starring Joaquin Phoenix as the titular Joker, or shall we say Arthur Fleck, the man who has had one too many bad days. More like Arthur fucked, because seriously, the movie does not let the poor guy have a break. No, he has no breaks at all. Of course, there's also Robert De Niro in there, uh, and there's also a lot of... Uh, uh, other people that I don't fucking remember their name, but you get you, yeah, the point. The point is that this movie was way overhyped in terms of the horror and the <laughs> incels and the the, the 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 white nationals are gonna come and use this as their banner to fucking destroy the world because the Joker told it. To. No, no, that didn't fucking happen. I swear. Guess to what God. didn't happen? All of that. I swear to God, it felt, uh, to be fair though, even you were a little skeptic. When the movie first came out, I was happy to let you know that not a single act of violence had occurred and your response was, yet. yet. And to your credit, I cannot say I blame you to being somewhat skeptic, considering the last time a major Batman movie publication came out, some jackass decided to ruin it for everyone. And there's actually a lot of details about that that, uh, that we can get into, uh, but I'll, I'll try to cliff notes all of this. And of course, we have to give our disclosure, but it's a little late for that. For the of you who uh, are new to this podcast, this is an uncensored interview and review podcast. That means that we're going to be spoiling the whole goddamn movie. It means that we're going to be swearing like motherfuckers because, well, we don't get monetized anyway. 
anyway, so who cares if we in swear ca- or not? In case you missed the first 60 seconds where I aggressively explain myself. And, of course, we're going to have opinions that may or may not clash with your worldview. This is opinion-based, and if we have them, then that's just humanity for you. And these opinions belong to us individually. They don't represent any particular group or company or platform or meatball or whatever the fuck else that you think we're talking on behalf of. If you want us to talk on your behalf, you go ahead and pay us for advertising. <laughs> if you want us to review shit, then you come and let us be press, and you let us review shit just like we do for this movie and for other stuff that happens. If you're okay with with us uh, uh, expressing worldviews that you, that you don't agree with, then we invite you to continue listening in and take our opinions as just as it is and take it in, with an open mind. If not, you can kindly tune the fuck out. I'm pretty sure there's a psychotic uh, baby shark video that you're missing out on. Do, now, do, 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 do. Now, no what our, happens, go on. Remember, no matter how hard it takes, no matter how it happens, you're not that important. It's okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, in our if you've listened to our past episodes of The Black Files, where we have reviewed movies in the past, um, you'll notice that we followed a uh, lengthy format where we go over an hour between two hours of talking about the movie from beginning to end. We're doing uh, we some, try not to. We really do. But it's this, just, we're just really bad at reviewing we, movies, let's be honest. Oh, no. <laughs> this time, we're going to make the effort to go a different direction and instead just highlight the uh, moments that made the movie awesome. Special to us. Well, exactly. this instance, like the thing is that I was watching the movie. I saw like right beside me. I had Michael, Angel's brother. I had Angel, and then I had Jose, all to my right. And I was sitting there in the theaters, and I was just taking everything in. I was trying not to like laugh at anything or like or or take it into any reactions. I was trying to actually absorb the movie and absorb what's happening in there. I think the only time that I jumped and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yeah. lie about this is uh a, 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 it, there's a bit where Arthur his mom who's a psycho she has a stroke and they're in the ho- she's at the ER and he's waiting outside the ER and two cops come up and question him about these weird ass killings that happen he's like uh I don't know anything about that leave me alone oh what about this card that you leave around is uh, uh, telling people that you have a condition where you laugh uncontrollably without this is an actual condition by the way that's yeah. a thing that happens in real life and it's like so what is that is that like a clown thing. You, why don't you fucking tell me if it's a clown thing? He walks in, funk. Right he, into that door. he walks right into the automatic door of the hospital, and I actually jumped at that because he went because it, that was clear as fuck. It just went straight into it. I'm like, I actually jumped at the sound of that, and he's and even the cops sound like, dude, that side's exit only. It's like, eh, what the fuck ever. He waits for a lady to come out, and he, and just, he just goes in. Goes in. It, is, it is the desperate feeling of I fucked up. I need to keep control of myself. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Actually, that's kind of the entire movie. I do. I gotta appreciate though. Okay, so first off, this movie is doing bangbusters. It is the highest rated R film ever. It beat this out movie Deadpool has one and two. It beat Deadpool one and two, and it beat The Passion of the Christ in being the number one R rated film. Until Jesus goes back in time and invents the Joker. Like, do you have any idea how much the, of a crazy deal that is? We like take superheroism aside or comic book characters aside, because let's face it, the Joker is no one's superhero. This is not a superhero movie. No, it's this not. This is barely a comic book. Movie. I'm sure. It's someone's no, crazy but like, fantasy the joker is a superhero but go on but like the <sighs> point that it outgrows passion of the freaking christ this was mel gibson trying to guilt jewish people into into uh, apologizing for christianity <laughs> This is Jim Caviezel <laughs> in the only role he's ever going to be known with. You know the guy who played Jesus Christ. He's probably acted in other shit, but he, the one notable role that he has no Jesus choice but Christ. to trade off of is being crucified. Hey man, you might as well put on your resume, you know. Yeah, yeah. but like it, nobody really it. takes him on that because it's such a fucked up movie to begin with. Mel Gibson was the one soldier whose hand is the one who fucking stakes Christ to the cross. The fact that he put himself into that particular role should tell you a thing or two about what he The director Mel Gibson, the man who literally and figuratively have cru- has crucified Jim Caviezel's career. <laughs> no, no little but like, fact, there were no practical effects. The reason why the guy is no longer in movies is because he actually died. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. They put him on the cross and stabbed him to death. Oh, fuck that. No, Hey, man, dude. it's called real acting. Oh, come on, man. you got to make it real. Works. But if the somebody po- needs to get stabbed on the I side... I can assure you, folks, Angel is on a psychosis. Jim Caviezel <laughs> is very much alive, much to his own regret. Well, yeah, because he came I guess back I... three days later. Oh, my God! 
No, 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 no. He's a, this is some heresy right here, man. <laughs> hey, man, I was raised Catholic. So if was I. I. If I'm not allowed to make fun of the book that they kept showing in my face for a whole decade, I don't know who is. Oh, my God. You know what? Yeah, to his own okay. opinion. Yeah. No, the point is it would take a movie as brilliant as the Joker movie to top movies like the Here's Deadpool the and the, the Passion br- of the Christ. Like, it's not, like, I can't even say that it's brilliant. Because like brilliant would be like a fucking like gigantic like fucking masterpiece. I'm actually horrified, but like intellectually impressed on it, only because of the subject matter of this guy, this poor fuck, Al- uh, like, like Joaquin Phoenix's character, uh, Arthur. He is uh, he like he's shown as someone who was already thrown out of Arkham after rehabilitation. You see one shot of him in the room where it's like white tiles. And he's in a straight jacket, and he's slamming his fucking head into yep. the door, and that's horrifying. Like, do you remember? No, do you know why we let you out, Arthur? <laughs> he was already stumped to begin with. Stump. It doesn't yeah. even seem like an angry smack. It seemed like he was going through a clockwork motion of maybe if I keep doing this enough times, so I can just stop thinking. But, but it's, it does. It's it does terrible. Like the main issue, though. Remember, I mean, everybody remembers the iconic line of the Joker's comics. Sometimes all it takes, it takes is one, one bad, day bad day to drive you to madness. This movie skews that. It does not take one bad day. It becomes very clear from the beginning that Arthur has had nothing but bad days from the beginning of time. And that highlights the main theme of the movie. We live in a society. No, 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 no. No jokes. Yeah. No, no jokes jo- here. Like, okay. Everyone who, no jokes. anyone who knows the stupid ass meme of we live, we in, a live society. in a society where the girls go off with the chats and leave us through gentlemen gamers at the side jerking off to porn of anime titties. And I'm like, hey, man, that's cool. Do whatever you want. Well, but- you know what? You know fucking what? If your motherfucking <laughs> incel ass at this point, if your sorry ass doesn't know how to be approachable to women without denigrating them in order to even try to stand a chance of building a relationship, then guess fucking what? Guess whose fucking fault that is? It's your own fucking fault, motherfucker. Ah, Pretty much. That's the beautiful part, isn't it? This shit doesn't even have anything to do with that sort of mentality. not everybody keeps telling Arthur the same thing. No, Juan. No, actually. Uh, It's all your fault, Arthur. Like, that's the bad shit that happens with Arthur, but I'm talking about the fucking incels who try to claim this guy. Oh, no, that's a completely different topic. That's that's the fuckers that I'm trying to tell them to fuck off. Arthur, on this instance, he's a fucking circumstantial tragic... If you channel your inability to get laid into hatred for women, that is not going to help you in the long run. Actually, Juan, speaking... Please, consider yourself. You are a person. There's something good about you. You just gotta find what's there. Speaking of the Joker, speaking of Arthur Fleck, the character, let's talk about the actor who played him, Joaquin Phoenix. Juan, I think that you and I had a conversation once where, where you mentioned that Joaquin Phoenix is actually was actually close to uh, Heath Ledger. Right? He was very good friends. Yeah, with him, they yeah. were good friends. Like they like Heath, the, Heath and Joaquin Phoenix were good friends. And those of you who I, I really don't think there's anyone who doesn't know who Heath Ledger was. He played the Joker in The Dark Knight. Everyone claims that his uh, portrayal me, of the Dark he Joker. was the main character in A Knight's Tale. Thank yeah, you very much. Of Get course, him right. He was the best part of the movie. Yes, he was. The movie was beautiful. But like, let's not forget. And also, he was in Brokeback Mountain. And but let's oh, not yeah, forget. He was there. Too. He wasn't there. My Cry Five. What? It'll make more sense once we get to that episode in the Let's Play. All course. right, but anyway, so point is, yeah, they <laughs> they were good friends, but Joaquin was not trying to channel. He wasn't trying to imitate or channel or do anything involving Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker because they're different Jokers. But you, they're but different I, people. Yes. Uh, All I, I said d- was that they were close friends and that they knew each other and that he was uh, heartbroken by his uh, buddy's passing. But and, didn't you also mention to me that like Joaquin Phoenix, uh, basically for this role, for the Joker movie, he went through some sort of uh, process? Uh, or yeah, he elaborate. went. To, he went into method acting. He let himself lose fifteen pounds in order for him to look lanky. My God, he L- looked so emaciated. That emaciated, poor yeah. You could L- see his ribs poking out of his spine. And the idea of him going into laughter, he actually went and visited people who have that actual condition, so he could figure out like the fucking like the com- the 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 way folks try to deal with that uh with with that uncontrollable laughter. Uh, and fucking like it's it's a s- fucked up laughter. It, it it is one that that you're like, okay, he's clearly not laughing on purpose or anything that's funny. He can't he's, control it. He cannot control it. It's under duress, and he he hands out little uh, cards that he has printed to, like no, to people when he one. gets into. No, apparently he's got he's got multiple. Really, I thought I only saw one. No, because they t- they mentioned it when, in the scene ah, with the cops. Okay, okay. okay. The, he mentioned one saying, "Please, uh, like, please uh, forgive my laughter. I have a condition. Turn card around." 
like for details. This lady turns it around. She it says uh, uh, it, it 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 spontaneously occurs when I'm under duress, and it's not an actual reflection of how I feel. Please return card. And this is handed to the this lady that you see in the trailer that he's riding on a bus, ejected from a shitty day at work, yep. and he tries to make a little uh, adorable little like three or four year old little black kid laugh in front of him by just making goofy faces at him. And she's like, "Stop harassing my son! How dare you!" Uh, Sorry, man. I'm just look, yeah, leave him alone. Once That's again, when he starts laughing because he's he can hold it. And you get everybody on the bus looking at him like, what the, the fuck? fuck? And she even like tells him, Is this a joke to you? He's covering his mouth. He's trying mm, 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 mm. Can't control it. It hurts. Like it, it yeah. causes him physical pain. That's when he pulls his card out and hands it to her. So, and she, like she hands it back to him. She's and she's just more weirded out and like kind of disappointed. Yeah, you're not rating the movie again. Actually, no, I'm not because the, you're literally not rating the I'm whole scene. I'm talking about beat that scene right, and that particular. Now y'all can scene. chill, okay, man. Right. I'm trying to keep it short. Thematics wise, though, it does highlight that what we mentioned before. The whole living in society is something that clearly abounds through the entire movie. Through the entire movie, Gotham City. What year is technically chronologically speaking this movie taking place? Uh, 1950s, 1960s. No, late 70s, early 80s. 70s or early years. Late 70s, okay. early 80s. Point in case is Gotham is a shithole. Yep, yeah. it's a shithole for everybody involved. It is a very big highlight of the whole, you know, ri- the divide between the rich and the poor. Yep. It, gets, it is very highlighted here. Extremely I, so. I like that they highlighted that part of Gotham City as opposed to all the other past Batman films. Like, if well, ba- well, many Batman films don't point it out, but they never really focus on it as much as this one does. And kudos to Joaquin Phoenix for going above and beyond on his homework on the things he needs to do for his role. Yeah, actually, Juan, now that you mentioned that, the whole incontrollable laughter thing, there was a scene that highlights that very clearly. Remember oh, really? at the beginning when Joaquim's, uh, I mean, saying Joaquim, Arthur's friend gives him the gun. Right yeah. Bef- right before he gets chastised by work. You notice that they help him, and in the same breath, they turn around and start making fun of the, the dwarf guy, right? Yeah. Notice that Arthur breaks out laughing, but the second he's out of sight, he, his face just goes <laughs> stone cold. That was the condition. He didn't want to laugh at the stupid joke. No, he didn't. Right, right off the bat, we go, he feels terrible about it, but he can't do it. There's nothing he can do. And, well, the entire movie is just basically the whole world taking a shit on Arthur at that point, and it builds up bigger and bigger until eventually it explodes. But I guess the best way I, I can describe how much I like this movie is the contrast. Now, of take what? into account, this movie has come out after the event, like, re- what was the most recent like comic book based movie that we had before this? Aquaman. She's, oh, are, are you talking about uh, not DC in general? In, in general, general? Uh, Spider-Man: Far From Home. Spider-Man: From Home, an incredibly comedic, fantastic, colorful romp da, da, about da, 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 terrorism, da, da, responsibility, da, 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 and even before that, that came off the the tales of Aven- the Avengers sequ- Endgame, the, the, the Avengers project. Avengers Which has been the most comic book shit since the actual creation of comic books. Granted, then, it's beautiful and a, a, a feat of yeah. technical and uh, artistic mastery, but what the fuck? And on the DC side, we had Shazam. And then Aquaman. Holy crap, Shazam. And then Aquaman, which are very... I'm not going to say by the books, because that, by the numbers, because that feels like a disservice to them. It was just a very typical superhero movie formula, you know? Yeah. Bombastic fighting, spectacular special effects, colorful costumes, cheesy one-liners, and then suddenly this fucking movie just puts the phone in the door and going, hang on a second. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me talk to you about some bad shit. What bad shit, society? Ba- ah! Bad shit, bad shit. Oh, God. Exactly. So the overall thematic of the movie is it kind of takes a hammer to the classical interpretation of the Joker. The yeah. Joker in comic books is seen as a man who is... A very uh, multiple past fellow. We never get to see the exact. All we know is multiple choice. Fell into a bath thing. of chemicals, went insane because of it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything's mm-hmm. funny. So and far as we know. So far. Remember, as we there's know. there there is that whole the pale man thing they have in the, the comics. Whole pale man thing too. There's also the many barrier interpretations of who the Joker was before he became the Joker. Mm-hmm. This one time he was Jack Nicholson. This one time he was Mark Hamill. Then he was Mark Hamill again and again and again and again. Then he was Heath Ledger. But know, then he was also that other guy from Thirty Seconds to Mars. But we're gonna also talk that about guy him. Thirty Seconds to Mars. The point is, ha! the Joker uh, has been a very, Joker. How do I explain it? Variable character. Just like the Batman himself, you can put him in a series of situations to interpret him. And this movie goes with a very fixed, specific situation. The idea of just being a damaged individual that just kind of snaps. Not just that, Angel, but also going with the same idea um, to reference the Dark Knight Rises. And I told this to Juan. 
um, where Bruce Wayne said that Batman could be anybody. Then Batman, well, S- same, 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 same idea with the Joker. The Joker could be, if anything, like here's, that, this idea compounds it even heavier. Like, heavily. but because I've actually seen folks actually post this up. They're like saying, "Oh my God, I'm seeing this thing in the jo- in the Joker movie," and like this could happen to just anybody. And well, I've had shitty days, and I've actually gone through medication, and I've I've been beaten up. Oh my God, could I be the Joker? Fuck. It is a dangerous and, and terrible thought to think, but it is unfortunately a very plausible one. The average individual doesn't have a very easy or comfortable life. Now, I mean, hell, if, if you watch Batman Beyond, they have other Jokers <laughs> before they came out with no, Return of the Joker. No, they don't. Those are they just were posers. Po- those are just posers. The that Jokers count, with a Z. Yeah, well, because be fair, it was the future and everyone has flying cars, so of course your Jokers to be fair, though, have to have Z's at the end. To be fair, though, and you have to have twins that are voiced by Sabrina the Teenage Witch before she became Psycho. Anyway. To be fair, though, though that uh, does highlight a point that future Gotham is so messed up that even the disenfranchised youth can, youth can turn to crime. Now, the main deal with Arthur, as we see, is it cannot, it takes a role and sticks with it. It takes a whole bad day thing and just turns it into a bad life because Arthur just has a really, really bad life. Like his mom is he's, psychotic. He's living with a mother that clearly has mental issues, so he's taking care of her while desperately trying to take care of himself, while trying to make a career as a comedian in a city that, quite frankly, doesn't appreciate comedy right now. And this is the saddest part about it. He's just not a good comedian. No, he's not. He's, he's just not good at it. Like uh, the 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 thing is, like he like he's trying to uh, he's trying to come up with jokes and stuff. He uses his like he uses a journal that he's trying uh, that he uses to uh to chronicle his thoughts. And you see, he's got some bad thoughts. He's got shit in there and saying like, I hope that my death Makes will more, more sense, sense than, my, than life. my life. Sense as in C E N T S as, as in, in money change as in like I get it ha. And you have stuff in there like he's got clippings of nudie magazines and clippings of people getting fucked up. And he pastes that on as parts of like his thoughts and shit. And he tries to write that down as his joke book too. But he's not focused enough for any of it. Even he's like listen, like tr- watching this one guy doing a uh, stand up and he's trying to like it lo- his mannerisms. Like and not even there. He's tr- like he's actually writing down stay confident, look folks in the eyes like be relatable and stuff like that he's like trying to write a manual he's not trying to copy the dude's joke specifically yeah there is a now that there is something to be said about people who use the tragedy in their lives for comedy many good comedians have done so the problem with arthur is that and i like that i like this part because it genuinely just takes a hammer to the whole ideology of what the joker can be and what he's been is the fact that arthur poor poor arthur beyond his illness beyond his mental problems he's just not funny yeah. It hurts, isn't it? And that's what the part that this movie hit me the most. The sheer reality of a person who has trouble communicating with other people, even beyond his illness, he's just a poor, socially awkward fop who is trying to get by and trying to achieve his dreams in a world that basically tells him, you're not good enough to achieve your dreams. Hmm. You're not good enough. Hmm. And you'll never be good enough. Also, okay. you live in a city that is basically going to the dogs. Notice throughout the throughout the movie, we see this like a running theme. The city is basically fucking falling apart. Yeah, there's they a, have a garbage man strike. Like, do you have any idea how gross that is? People are like, oh my god, this is disgusting. How dare you? Yeah, These- fun fact. When social services stop working, society kind of stops to exist. No, no yeah. You want to know what? Oh, another thing I do want to talk about the what this movie did brilliantly is the twist. But saying later. brilliant, but brilliantly. Yeah. It is brilliant. Shut up. Brilliant! <laughs> the twist. In the middle of the movie, where um, the jo- where uh, Arthur Fleck read one of the letters that his mom was going to write to Thomas Wayne. Yeah, she's got this whole fixation about oh, oh, I used to work for the Wayne family. One, he's going to uh, be- save us. He's going to help us out. We, he's just a nice man. We just have to write to him. He'll help. Thomas he op- Wayne portrays the part of I want to be the major. He's a politician who is trying to. Now here's the thing, though. We never find out how genuine his desire is to fix the city. Yeah, no. For all like, we know, he might be one hundred percent genuine with, but the way he expressed himself in public, kind of callous, left and a lot to be desired. Kind of like an asshole. Ironically enough, it highlights the other side of the gap. Wait the a minute. The rich do not understand how the poor live. Isn't no, they Thomas don't. Wayne? Per, uh, wasn't it in this movie Thomas Wayne portrayed by Alec Baldwin? No. no who no. was who portrayed him? Alec fucking Baldwin. Are you kidding me? Who portrayed Look him? it up, motherfucker. Hey, how you about f- you talk to me like a normal human being and actually tell me? How no, about you live in a society and you talk to me then. Okay, well, the point is, I am gl- I like that they elaborated more on Thomas Wayne in this movie. I mean, to be fair, the only time they referenced Thomas Wayne in the past Batman movies is when he got killed. And, yeah, we got, <laughs> honestly, yeah. This movie gave more, like, <laughs> actual, <laughs> oh my god. This movie gave more character to Thomas Wayne than most Batman adaptations ever have. 
hilariously. Yeah, no, and the t- and the twist in this movie, or rather, the twist before the twist in this movie, which just adds there more fuel to the fire. Yeah, this just adds more fuel to the fire for Arthur Fleck. Is that when he finds out that he has some sort of relative connection with the Wayne family? Mm, sort of, yes, sort of. So now, actually, if you t- and just to answer your question, Jose. Because he couldn't take it when I was freaking out at you for no, uh, for, uh, for no reason here. Um, he was played by a gentleman by the name of Brett Cullen. He Brett played, Cullen. Okay, just to give you an idea, he was a congressman in The Dark Knight Rises. Huh. He also played Nicolas Cage's dad in Ghost Rider. Wow. So he's he was Wayne no matter where he goes. He was made yep. for comic book movies. Yeah. Kind of. So, point in cases. Okay. Taking back to the idea of the Joker falling apart, in many comic books and portrayals, the Joker seems to be this insane criminal mastermind. His mind such a complex maze of banana bullshit that even the Batman, the greatest detective in the world, has trouble figuring out what he would do. Here, Arthur is... He's... He's not. He's not at all. He's not a brilliant dude. He's not a mastermind. He's not a super criminal genius. He's just a guy. He's a dude who's fucked up. In fact, the entire, okay, the crux, the, po- the point where things starts going downhill is when he commits his first murder, which, as we all know, happened when three rich assholes that were drunk got pissed at him because he basically took attention from a woman that they were harassing, so they proceeded to beat the living shit out of him. He pulls out the gun, kills the guy in self-defense, and then kills the other two. Because Now, it can be argued that the first guy ki- uh, sh- killing him in self-defense is one thing. The yeah. other two guys, it, it, you can try and say, well, they're witnesses and they were also trying to beat him up. So oh, no, that's self-defense too, except course. for the last one, which was clearly a crime of passion. Well, yeah, no, the, the, the third guy, like yeah. he, he was running away and he was already shot in the leg or yeah. the ass or something. After that's was when he basically shot him going on just autopilot at that point. He's like, well, fuck it, might as well, right? Pop, pop, pop. And no. This doesn't return into Arthur. Notice this, though. Arthur doesn't go completely bad shit, giggly, insane after he does this. He does what many people do when they find themselves in a traumatic situation. He, he tries to go back to the routine. Yeah. He tries to just go back to circle, just leave it all behind, just forget about it. And through the same movie, we see the same shot of him climbing those damn stairs. Yep. Yes. Yeah. This was this was a start. I mean, there are lots of other things that drove him all the way down. Like as this I mentioned, was point one. Basically. This is point one. The second point was th- the letter that I mentioned. The letter showing that he may have a connection to somebody who basically has been there all this time and, and purposely threw him away to raise their own. Other he's son. a bastard son of Bruce Wayne, according to his mama. Mm-hmm. So he goes and tries to fucking find out. And uh, and once again, Arthur is a victim of his own psychosis. He. I know what you know what he's, he's trying to do. He's you know that he means no ill will. Yeah. But look at the things from the point of view of the average bystander. A mysterious stranger in a trench coat shows up at your house, starts making trick uh, magic tricks to your son, and then just grabs him by the face and tries to make a smile out of him. Well, the kid clearly wasn't amused. What the hell, dude? How like, would you react if a complete stranger approached your yeah, son? Yeah, no, I'd suck him in the jaw. I'm like, uh, no, back the fuck up. And you know, as the audience, we have myopia on this. Fourth wall myopia. We know Arthur means no ill will. But we are not the, the we are not the other characters. You're right. From our point of view, Arthur is just Arthur. From their point of view, there is a very ins- unsettling looking fellow who keeps talking about random shit, claims that you are his son, and he's basically has no social grace whatsoever. All right, one little thing that I want to pick on. Apparently, the guy they got for Alfred, the people are like, oh, okay, he's useless because Alfred's supposed to be a badass. And Alf- when he was younger, like, why does he let uh, Arthur grab him for- through the gate? It's like, okay. What the fuck are you going to do when a guy reaches through a gate and grabs you by the collar? How Looks at you for 10 seconds and then runs off. Yeah. I'd be bewildered. Like, what the fuck He doesn't do anything. You? He can't, like, reach and actually harm you. Yeah. That's like, just a minor complaint. That's not even worth it. Alfred, Alfred, people are assholes about that. Alfred I don't was, get it. I, Alfred's face was like, what? He's like, what the fuck are you doing? What are What's you? your problem? What runs. you going to do? And Yeah, and then he runs, runs off. And the Very saddest much. thing is, part of me can genuinely see the train of thought that Arthur goes through. You know, like the awkwardness of how do I approach this person falling into the familiar pattern of doing magic tricks to psych himself up. Like, getting, it's not a bad idea. He's getting like, way too close like, physically to people you don't know because you don't understand boundaries. That's Freaking too. out when somebody approaches you and pointing it out, jumping to aggression out of fear, going by the thought of, oh, fuck, what am I doing? Runs away. But it wasn't until after he, uh, later on when he finally meets Thomas Wayne and then... Once again, another twist. No, but he uh, like he actually meets him and try to s- tries to sneak into this. He tr- yeah, he uh, meets. He into tries a, what the fuck kind of th- it was like a fancy museum? Gala. 
It yeah, a like fancy a fancy gala. gala showing Charlie Chaplin's film Modern Times, which is hysterical because it, you have like fucking rich people in tuxedos and white tails and coats watching a movie about workers' life and fucking situations and shit. And these guys are laughing because, hey, Charlie Chaplin is a comedy. funny man. Also, consider the fact that they were watching the scene where he kept skating closer and closer to an edge, but didn't quite fall. Like, we've all seen the gif of how the shot was probably done, but that's not the point. The point is, um, so Arthur actually, like, sneaks up and sees Thomas Wayne. He's like, hi, you're my dad. Like, what the fuck? No, Wait, no. you're that guy who tried to grab my son? What the fuck is wrong with you? No, listen, I, I don't, I'm not trying to hurt you. I don't want any money. I just want to know the truth. The truth like, is that your mom was crazy, dude. And what? she basically made up all this bullshit. You're lying. She worked for me. You're kidding me. No, I ain't. No, you can't. You've got to be my dad. Look at us. Falcon. Punch! And yeah, on one hand, see, here's the thing though, I genuinely couldn't bring myself to hate anybody in the scene. There were no bad people in that in that actually, particular moment. W- actually, worse. You want to know what it is? What? It's an all heel program. Yeah, it is. It's all heel. Like, because on the one hand, you got this motherfucker coming up telling you, "Hey, I'm your long lost son, and my uh, and uh, and my, my mom uh, is ill, and she it could use you, uh, some guidance from your ass." And, like, he's a fucking stranger coming out of fucking nowhere, sneaking up on you while you're taking a piss in a marble urinal. And here's this rich asshole who was showing his being a rich asshole, but he's trying to be like a normal asshole. Actually, funny I guess- thing is, aside from that massive fucking foul pound the news when he basically yeah, called poor right. people plants. Do we see Thomas Wayne say or do anything that you could consider bad? Not really. Look but at it from like his he point just of has view. an asshole demeanor on look it. That's at, yeah. yeah, look at it. Actually, not even that. Look at it from your point of view. You are taking a piss. A stranger shows up. The very same stranger who harassed your son. The other day. The yeah. other day. And starts claiming you are his dad. And then you've realized, wait a second. You are the son of that lady who literally went insane. How what? would you believe a person who is literally crazy? What are you talking other- about? No, look, your mom adopted your ass. Okay, I know this shit because I had to, I, I had to get her shit cleared up because she went to the crazy bin after I fired her. And, and then there's... in response, the other guy just starts screaming about you about the society he lives in. Wouldn't you react with violence and basically go, get the fuck away from me and my son and never talk to me again? Yeah, no. Yeah. It's I all will... healed at the end yeah, of the day. It's, it's, it's literally, uh, it's miscommunication followed by people cannot communicate. No, you're right. Like Arthur picked the worst possible time to do so. Also, of Arthur course, broke Arth- into his psycho laughter regrettably and he's like, was this a joke to you? Stop in the face. Once again, Arthur is a victim of his own condition that just won't let him express himself properly. Plus, he's not convinced of what Thomas Wayne said, and he went as far as to go to medical records to at Arkham at Arkham and Asylum steal that shit. to st- basically prying the truth away just to find out if what Thomas Wayne said is bullshit or not. And hey, it is not bullshit, and that adds he cracked like the fu- the fire is stoking at this point. So oh. the next person he winds up killing is his own mama for lying to him. But wait, speaking of fire stoking. Notice this beautiful thing. Through this entire time we've been talking, Arthur has never embraced the Joker as anything more than a disguise. Not he even then. To him, it's just it's the makeup I put on when I go to work. Exactly. Meanwhile, everybody else seems to be doing that. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, it's From funny the because they hear the murder happens. Because the murder's in the train. Everyone's like, oh, there's a revolutionary. There's an underground hero who's killing the rich. We should kill the rich. And they're clowns. And this guy's calling everyone who's poor clowns. So let's all be clowns. Like, it is pretty clear from the start that the this. situation in Gotham is reaching a tipping point. There is protests on the streets. And Thomas Wayne, the man who claimed to want to clean the city, just basically called everybody a clown just for wanting a better life. Meanwhile, the disenfranchised people of Gotham see the clown that killed the rich as some sort of rogue hero. A Robin Hood with a gun, as in May. Except what he robbed, nothing city, to life. Everybody in the city is pushing their expectations onto this figure because they don't know the context. They don't we know, know. Tr- what happened was a bunch of drunken rich assholes attacked some poor mentally ill fellow on the train and he fight them and he killed them in self-defense. Though the last killing could be somewhat dubious out of the same. Yeah, guys. because he shot him in the back of his ass and then afterwards while he was trying to claw up like the stairs, two put two more in the, his fucking back. But in case, if you stretch it, even that could be considered self-defense because Arthur mm-hmm. is mentally ill. But we know that. From the point of view of the city, like I love this idea of everybody th- sees shit differently. Yep. The poor see an unsung hero has risen to take down the rich bourgeoisie and fight for the proletarian. From the point of the rich, there's a crazy motherfucker dressed like a clown cleaning rich people because nobody understands each other. Angel, there's also one more thing that we've overlooked that adds more to the insanity of Arthur Fleck as it culminates to the climax of the movie. Who would that be? 
the lady uh, that lives in the same uh, building. There's ah, this okay. lovely lady who yeah. lives in the same okay. building. Okay, so we're talking about... It okay. also highlights a very, very uncomfortable aspect of people like Arthur so, and the shit they deal yeah, with. Yeah, so you're talking about the character of Sophie, played by Zazie Beats. You may recognize hey. her as Domino in Deadpool 2. Oh, wow. That's her. I almost forgot that was her. That's her. Well, glad to see her getting still steady work. Dude. Good job on you, Chief. God, she's gorgeous. She's they excellent. met one time in the elevator and had a conversation. And Not then, even a conversation. Just a very brief, hey, just man, like a it brief, sucks, hey, doesn't it? Sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And notice how that became a fixation for Arthur. Notice how, okay, we know, by the way, plot twist, the majority of the interactions they have from this point on didn't even exist. It was Never happened. Paid. So here's a beautiful thing, though. Have you ever had that moment... Well, you felt so very lonely and depressed that the moment a pretty girl showed you even the slightest smidgen of affection, you became fixated for days. You're beautiful. That's what happened. Yep. You're beautiful. And I'm like, oh, oh, I know You're people who don't this. Oh, this is true. This is not hitting close, but I'm seeing it hit close to someone else and it's fucking burying me here. And I'll never be. With this person you. shows a slight hint, just a bit. It's not even affection. It's a brief moment of relatability. Hey, man, it's rough out there, isn't it? And Arthur is so attention and affection starved that, that he, he builds an entire romance in his head around this person. Oh, my God. You notice it's that after bad. Arthur does the clown thing, it just cuts to him going to her, kissing her, and imply that they fucked in their apartment? Implicitly. but Because um, that's what you think in your head when you go, man, I was so fucking badass. Yeah, apparently. And then I'm going to go there and confess my feelings, and she's going to accept them immediately. And I'm like, oh, this is not going to end well. Oh, this is getting heavy on me. Oh no, it it gets heavier as soon as he realizes that it was all a freaking hallucination when he was right there in her after living. killing his mom. Was after it after killing his mom? Yes. Yeah. After, no, oh yeah. By the way, he just kind of kills his mom, but when he realizes, oh, oh wow, the woman that I care for years basically Lied. let her abusive boyfriend beat me until I got brain damage. Like he doesn't like he. Doesn't doesn't even occur to him he doesn't mention any of this shit he doesn't say or do anything none of that's actually brought up until he sees it in black and white in those files that he steals from arkham notice and how he imagines the whole flashback he's there yeah yeah we see the, the image of the doctor talking to his mom who has this look on her face and we see arthur standing back in, so that the image he's sitting is, behind her the idea is basically the he's doctor building the image in his head oh so that's how that went that's how it must have gone. Like he's like he's actually saying like Miss uh, uh, Miss Fleck, your child was adopted. You have the paperwork. No, Mister Thomas Wayne wrote them up. He had them done for us Master to protect Thomas us. Thomas Wayne fired Wait. you like a month ago, man. No, that's not true. He loves me. Our thing is real. What's the, you want to know what it is? Uh, this is something that you probably didn't notice until after all this shit. He has a he finds a picture of his mother in their apartment as he's getting ready to finish everything off and in the back of the p picture is a picture of her when she was younger it says you, it has handwritten you've got a great smile initials TS how much you want to bet that was t like uh, obviously it implies Thomas Wayne t took that picture of hers and, and wrote in the back like hey here's a picture of you you got a really nice smile and she took that the same way Arthur did with uh, Sophie here I'm and she built really that shit wait why TS and not TW I meant to say TW. Why did okay. I say TS? My TW, bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, he took the last name from Mrs. Wayne? Like Wait TS Elliot? No, I meant to say <laughs> TW. My mistake. I'm sorry. So yeah, he basically... Ha now, here's the thing, though. The mo that, that is big ambiguous because that is a very affectionate gesture. It can be something as simple as, hey, man, keep it up. You're wonderful. Like, you're doing a good job. But it and can be, there may have been something there. The maybe there was. Maybe there isn't. never tells. And ultimately, Thomas Wayne is never proven or shown to have done anything with her. So that, combined with the physical, psychological file, leads us to believe that, yeah... It is very likely that Arthur's mom was cuckoo for cuckoo puffs for a long, long time. Long Pretty time. much. That, along with other events that happened in the movie, were, were well executed and just building up to the climax near the end of the movie where it builds up to where the like, Joker executes the... the not Arthur, not the, Joker. He not does, Joker. He's not Arthur the Joker Fleck. He's not the Joker. Arthur, 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 just call him Arthur. It's Arthur, Arthur. Really. Arthur is called the Joker, but he never really becomes the Joker. In fact, he never becomes the Joker at all. No, he doesn't. Like, Not even at the end, funny thing. Actually, what like it's crazy because of all of the paranoia and all the the psychosis that comes around. Because after, like we were mentioned earlier, uh, he breaks into Sophie's apartment and she treats him like a motherfucker who broke into like her a apartment. Stranger who just like like sir, I don't you know. Gotta go. Like I don't know what you're doing here, but I just put my daughter to sleep, 
and I, you nearly need to leave this apartment. And it's impl- the next shot is him in his own apartment, laughing Smoking and crying and holding and the pillow, hugging the pillow, while you see sirens outside of the window. What does that mean? It's heavily implicitly suggested that maybe he killed her too, or maybe we don't know, or maybe another crime literally happened like a block away from him. We don't know. Both scenarios are sadly very, very prone. And in the midst of all of this shit, I know you were about to say something. Like, I'm no, sorry. No, no, I was just gonna like, get to the to the but, climax. Yeah, I was, um, I'm gonna help set you up. Um, with Arthur being so shit at stand up. Uh, one of the comedy clubs sent a tape to uh, what's his face? Uh, Robert De Niro's character was it Murray Griffin? No, there we Murray. go. I knew Robert. Uh, Ro- yeah, Robert De Niro's you know, character. Murray Franklin. There we Murray go. Murray Franklin. And yes. and he t- 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 says like, "Hey, get a load of this Joker here. He's a really shitty comedian." And apparently, his whole strategy is laugh at your own jokes and laugh, and hopefully, people will start laughing with you too. Wow, this guy's a real a lousy clown. Whatever. Anyway, we got a good show tonight, folks. And he. F- fucking bugs out at how much because he also had the same sort of build up in his idea of wow wouldn't it be nice to meet this guy yeah, he's he, my idol he this that dude like a father figure he can write imagine an entire scenario in his head it's pretty and it's all saturated with color and it's nice it's so like, J.J. From Abrams the beginning, to shit yeah. from the beginning of the movie he holds Murray Franklin up to, on a in pedestal a very very high pedestal like I want to be like this guy in the future I want to make it in the big leagues as a comedian I just want to make people laugh but as At the end of it, saw... he gets after he finishes killing his, uh, 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 killing those three people. After he finishes killing his mom, he gets a fucking call from the Murray Franklin show saying, "Hey, Murray would like really like to have you over." He's like, uh, "Wow, holy shit!" Uh, really? Yeah, what? Really? Sure, thanks. Why not? He is in such a low fucking point because, uh, but his idea is initially to go in in full makeup. Hey, Murray, it's nice to be here. He even practices you in see, his he fucking house. He practices the motions. Yeah, the, coming the out, dance. hello, shaking people's hand. He the, really wants to get it right because at this point, I think that might be like in his mind the only thing he has left. And the the, w- the way he he comes out is horrifying because he says it's like it's really great to be here. Uh, well, I'm glad that you invited me to tell jokes. I've got a joke for you. Knock knock. He pulls his revolver out and practices killing yeah. himself he's genuinely himself thinking head. of going there to just at this oh and as we find out right before he proceeds to do something fucking terrifying to another person he's off his meds now yep he genuinely has stopped caring because he has through the actions of others and himself systematically destroyed anything that he ever valued at this point he's the, he's no got complete, nothing left to live for as far yeah. as he's concerned he's so like, he's well, planning to end, the end it all end. might as well go out high also i like the fact that his suit is reddish because it represents Maroon. fire more maroon than red. It's more, but, but it's meant to equate fire. You notice that, right? Yes. The finds fire rises. Smoking, finds himself smoking in many situations before shit goes bad. Yes, you're right. Lots of fire riots happen right after, you know, after the event. Yes. And what's, he, what's crazy of all this, like, right before he like he finishes everything off, he's getting his makeup on, and his old clown uh, co-workers come in. He kills one of them because he's a motherfucker who... who basically ga- sold him out. Sold him out and, and gave him the gun that he used in the first place. And the other dude was the midget guy, and is like, hey, you know what, dude? I'm sorry you had to see that. You were always good to me. You can go ahead and leave. Bloody hell, man. What are you there doing is, here? There is this terrifying moment where the poor dwarf tries to open the door, but he's not tall enough to reach the chain. And he goes, can you open the door for me? And in that moment, during those 10 seconds, those were the scariest 10 seconds of the movie because you genuinely don't know what Arthur is going to do. And then he unlocks the hatch, kisses the gun the and goes, you were always nice to me. Go, go, go. Like the dwarf dude. And like lets him out. And he's like shit in his pants. Also, yeah. the implication that he just left his bre- his former friend's dead body in the apartment. In his like, own apartment. What the fuck? And then we get, you know, the moment where he's just going down the stairs, dancing. The because, fucking yeah, yeah. Highlight of my What's life. What's that song? Is that is Arthur Fleck like basically just embracing it. This is the happiest Arthur is ever going to be in the entire movie. Here we you know, go. The because he genuinely doesn't care anymore. He's no. lost everything. He's thrown away everything. And he just wants to go have one good highlight. And let it be. What he did uh, on the talk show, he's finally he finally sits down, meets Murray Franklin well, for the bu- first time. Actually, before no, he that, meets him right th- before once him. again, bio- myopia. Notice this: we met to see Murray, the real Murray, not the TV show host. And he's just he's a just a regular cool dude. In fact, he's like, "Oh, you want to be called the Joker? Okay, I'll call you like, the Joker." What? Like, yeah, call me Joker. That's what you called me when you showed my video the first time. And he genuinely you sure about just that? seems. Uh, he genuinely just. Oh, are you sure? Okay, right. it's like, your show. We'll it, do your like, show. And his producer like, look, with the riots that are going to be going on tomorrow night and uh, tonight, and this guy's in clown makeup, like, no, he's no, doing no, no, a political no, no. Let's, let's statement. Let's give him a chance. This is school. It's all right. I don't believe statement? in anything. No, no, I'm not making a statement at all. I just want to dress like a clown. It's like, 
okay, cool. Like, like Murray he, is Murray takes it with a cool ass shit about this whole thing. He's like, okay, no, like he real this guy realized I rabbed on him. Let's go ahead and like make a show of it. Let's so find Joker shows up, does his bit, Frenches the lady, sits no, down, and like this old lady who's shit. like like the old like like you would get like a doctor. What the fuck? I don't know. Like uh, I don't know. Whatever. He's a psychologist. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, he just sits and, her down and starts like, going to town he, himself. And you see him like practicing coming out of the of the fucking thing, and he twirls like a fucking ballerina on his way out like a proper like clown and stuff because thing and you see him do that throughout the movie before when he's in particularly hard places he dances, he dances to, himself. to himself it's like a yeah. bit of a mantra and the music is always very slow and sad and violent but as the situation gets more elevated even at the end By the music God. gets very animated and there's way more instruments it's because he's no longer taking the meds so he can hear all, all the band it. playing and as soon as he's on the air, like after he fumbles on his own jokes, whether it's on purpose or not, no. he finally actually like confesses. He, 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 no, he breaks when Murray makes fun of him. Now, here's the thing, though. We can tell without a shadow of a doubt that Murray means no ill will. He's just basically running with the jokes, trying yes. to make a show. He doesn't mean anything bad for you, but for Arthur, Arthur pulls this out is his, the equivalent of his hero pissing on him in public. Like Arthur pulls out his joke, and he's like, "Okay, I've got a joke for you." Um, he's got a book. Take your time. We got all night. Oh, he's got a book. He's got a book. Um, like you know, Murray. Knock means, knock. You needed a book for that. You need a book. For that? Uh, like um, you know, Murray means no ill will. He's just trying to make his own. But he's like, it. like losing it right at him. Like, dude, I, I just realized. No, you're just fucking using me for cheap laughs. You're laughing at me just like all the others. Well, the you're is, dressed like a clown. What do you want us to do? No, that's I mean, the like, saddest thing. Murray genuinely means no ill will. Or he seems to mean no ill will. But at this point, Arthur has gone so far down the hole that now everything, everything, everything. It, he just basically imagines everybody mm -hmm. making fun of him all the time. It's fucking brutal. He's genuinely gone past far the line that everything is a threat to him now. And that's when he, like, fucking snaps. I was like, no, like, I, I didn't... I, I had something prepared, but it doesn't really matter anymore after I after what? Well, after, you know, after I, I killed, killed those, those three guys. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold on. Are you saying live on the year that you're the man oh, responsible? Oh yeah, totally. For that? And this is when you know that Arthur has gone from. He just doesn't care anymore. No, like, why not, would you do that? Well, they couldn't jokes. carry a tune. Yeah. Murray. Notice that he's the only one laughing at his own jokes. He's yeah. Because now he finds out that the only funny thing is himself, so he's the only one having fun. And after all this, he he dresses down Murray for trying to use him for cheap laughs and say like, "Oh, you're gonna laugh at me now, and you wouldn't. Ca you guys care that I killed these three rich kids? If I was sitting on the gutter dying right now, you'd walk you'd right walk past right my over me. You wouldn't give a shit. Like, okay, but that doesn't justify you killing people. Okay, I think we're done. No, I think I've got another joke for you. And here's where I I insist that we're gonna have to uh, fucking do this. Okay, <laughs> I've got another joke for you. No, I, think I don't think I want to hear any more jokes. What do you get? That's enough. When you cross a mentally uh, a mentally uh, ill loner with a society I that abandons him and enough. treats him like garbage, you, I'll tell you what you get, Murray. You, you get, get what, what you fucking, fucking deserve. Pop. <laughs> Pops it, him right in the head. And it is so... And the worst part is how realistic the shot looks. There is no brain matter exploding. There's just a small spray of blood and slumps over. Done. Everyone's and freaking out and trying to clear out. Everyone's running. And he just looks at the gun like, huh. And he just puts another Pops one like... a couple more. <laughs> like, oh man, that was hilarious. He grabs the fucking camera. That's all for tonight, folks. And remember. And remember, that's, that's life. life. You know what I really loved about that scene? How, even at the end, he still sounded awkward and whiny. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect for him because it's not meant to be a triumphant, bombastic, yeah, the character is more, it's meant to be a bad thing. This dude just snapped and he's basically... Murdered it, someone it on air. self-pitying, angry, weaving rant of a man who literally is mad as hell and he's not going to take it anymore. Which is precisely why I would say... That there's no way possible that this movie will ever inspire incels. Because Do you know not. why? Because it's an accurate reflection of themselves, and yes. they don't like that. It is the it is the painful truth. At the end of the day, Joker uh, Arthur, sorry, it's a pitiable, broken man. But it doesn't make any of his actions justified. Or exactly, well. he's still committed. I mean, the only one you can justify is the first one, because hey, they were trying to kill him. Yeah, he deserves. But the everything else on that point, every action he's taken, every death that he's put in his hands, is not meant to be seen as a heroic, justifiable anti-anything. 
It's literally a crazy man snapping and killing people. That is a bad thing. Oh, no. This whole movie is basically the story of Arthur Fleck, a, 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 a man who is already broken from the beginning with, with uh, sequ sequences of bad events, one event leading after the next, which is... Well, but it's not my fault. Society didn't know. You no. have to be accountable for who you're fucking shooting, I mean, though. Arthur has a bit of leeway because he's literally mentally ill, but at the end of the day... It is society's fault. They never took care of a person who was broken. And it, it, yeah, and after every event that happens in the movie, he loses a bit of himself. And after he shot the the host, like any piece Murray. of Arthur uh, and Murray, and any piece of that uh, of uh, him as a human being, gone. Notice how every person he kills becomes farther and farther away from culpability. The first people he kill are the rich men that were trying to beat him to death. Yep, kind of justifiable. The second person he kills is his mother who was also kind of crazy. So that one is somewhat unjustifiable. The third person he kills is the friend that threw him under the bus. Who, who got, gave I him mean, the gun that he used to kill him with. Ultimately, his friend meant well when he gave him the gun. And I'm not, I'm not justifying the guy throwing him under the bus, but he didn't deserve to die for that. And the last person he kills is somebody completely innocent, whose only crime was making fun of him. Every person he kills goes farther and farther away from those who wronged him because he's breaking and he just... He's essentially lashing out at this point. He lashed out. Yeah. And meanwhile, this causes the city to reach a boiling point and the protests become full-on fucking riots. It's ridiculous. Fun fact, the first person he sees wearing a mask, it's implied to be that lady he defended on the train. It's heavily implied. So it is. you see Arthur in the police car because, of course, he's going to get arrested. He's not going to make a miraculous getaway like in the comics. That's not Except, how of works. course, for the ambulance that runs over the uh, the police car and then the Actually, rioters break him out. Accident. Yeah. They no. didn't know he was there. They but just, they realized, like, oh my God, it's car. him. Hit that shit. Bam. Bam. And they pull him out and you get that beautiful it's and yet incredibly sad moment when the crowd is cheering and screaming for him and calling out his name. Well, they're calling out yeah, Joker. Joker. And he... His mouth is bloody and he, from the wreck. And so the only thing he can do, he does that and redoes his smile makeup. His smile and just bows and grandizes and the crowd is losing their shit. And in this moment... This is the only time that he's genuinely happy. And it is the most sad scene in the movie because no one cares about Arthur. Nope. No, that's the reason why at the end of the movie, he's laughing at his psychologist going, it's, it's When okay. he's locked up in Arkham himself. Yeah, by the way, yeah. he's locked up in Arkham. Because, of course, and she, the psychologist is like, what's so funny? What's the joke? He's like, you wouldn't get it. Oh, unless we forget also because we had the Waynes here, we see Bruce and uh, uh, Wayne lose oh, his yeah, again. It's that, worse because it's not only... It's not even a robbery. It's just some dude going, you get what you fucking deserve. And Wayne then he shoots pops. him and then he shoots her. He shoots Martha. Away. Well, he's he breaks her pearls all over again. Yeah, that's my only no. complaint about this movie. Actually, that, how many times have we seen the, uh, uh, Bruce Wayne's parents getting killed now? Actually, though, I think I can justify this one because... Instead of being a crux point, it becomes a side effect of what actually happened in the movie. It's just like, oh yeah, and some rich kid lost his parents. Boy, I sure hope nothing bad happens about that. Dun, 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 dun. Notice that the last time we see well, like, Bruce do... kneeling before the death of his parents, we see the giant rats that have been infested in the city running behind him. Well, like I can forgive almost all of that if it weren't for the fact that while they tried to keep it to the mythos of Batman coming out, or Bruce Wayne coming out with his parents uh, seeing a Zorro movie, since this was set in the late 70s and early 80s, they have it set specifically in 1981, they come out of seeing Zorro the Gay Blade, yep. a parody of Zorro, and I'm like, way to go, Dad. You go. take me to see this shit. This is the last thing I see before you die. Like, Fucking, you're the worst dad ever. Yep. Like, oh my god. <laughs> now, but yeah, the movie has reached the tipping point, and this is where Arthur, in a sense, ceases to exist. The main tragedy is the fact that he's only happy when Arthur doesn't exist anymore. People don't see Arthur. Even at the end of the movie, no one gives a shit who Arthur is. Didn't he? Didn't uh, also Arthur made a comment saying that his life is basically a joke? No, yeah. he said. Like specifically uh, to his mother before suffocating her in the fucking uh, emergency room. You know, I always used to think that my life was a tragedy. Now I realize it's a fucking comedy. Snuffs her out. Joke of it. Yeah. He realizes that at the end. His life was for a joke. For everything he did, for everything he accomplished, and I'm putting that in big quotations. Giant air quotations around this. Arthur is exactly where he started. He's worse than where he started because he has no one who cares for him now. Right. He's now literally just a number of a patient in some hospital somewhere. Arkham, yeah, of course. But to us, we know the audience doesn't. Yep. The, the, the rest of the crowd doesn't. 
and I think that is the reason why this movie is so well praised and liked because this is a genuine bona fide tragedy. We haven't seen a tragedy in theaters in decades. This is a tragedy because no one gets what they want. Innocent people, both rich and poor, die. The masses of Gotham yep. get nothing because the city is still a crime-ridden shithole. Yep. The rich people of Gotham become fearful of the poor that work for them so that the buy gets even bigger. The city is still a dirty, rotten shithole. Arthur's mom is dead. His friend is dead. A host of TV, show, a well-loved TV show host is dead. A rich man that may have given a shit about the city is dead. And Arthur Beck, the man or who Fleck. is indirectly or directly responsible for all this, achieves absolutely nothing, nothing from this. In fact, he loses everything. The Joker becomes nothing more than a symbol. A symbol of what exactly? Exactly. What is it supposed to be? No, like th- like the the people the the poor people of Gotham lashing onto him is like, oh, he's chaos, he's anarchy, and he's that's changed, the main problem. and that's the problem. No, he's not. He's just some fuck. Just some fuck. And here's the mo- the saddest, hilarious thing of them all. The people of Gotham embrace the symbol to the point that they don't care about improving their own lives. They just want to, what is it that Facebook keeps telling me? Eat the rich. Rich people taste like pork. This movie has highlighted a point that I'm kind of surprised people don't point out. You never win by destroying a system. You can only win if either A, you have a system of your own, or B, you fix the system. Because if you break a system and you have nothing to substitute it with, you end up right back where you started. And lo and behold, so they did. By embracing the Joker as a symbol of sheer violence and anarchy, all you succeeded at was basically everybody seeing you as a symbol of violence and anarchy. And guess what a working society doesn't like, Juan? Violence, violence and, and anarchy. anarchy. Violence and anarchy. Nobody yeah. actually fixed anything because nothing got fixed. No, nothing Breaking got fixed. Breaking the system only works when you have something to replace it with. Which they didn't. All that wound up doing is taking anger and taking uh, discord and throwing it into the fucking thing. Rather than taking a, a let's say you have, uh, you don't have air conditioning, so you have a fan, but the motor's busted. Instead of fixing the, bu- uh, the, the uh, instead of fixing the motor or replacing the fan, let's say your solution is grabbing a sledgehammer and smashing the fan, smashing the air conditioning that you don't have, and smashing everyone else's air conditioning in the surrounding because fuck it, everyone should suffer if I'm suffering. Also, then you go to the fire conditioning factory and start smashing the assembly line. That too. Yeah. Congratulations, you ruined it for everybody. But yeah, no. Uh, you know, everybody, when they watch this movie, they're, they're going to have their own interpretations. We can't control that. But yeah, if you... Analyzing it from beginning to end, like yeah, it's okay. but it's not meant to inspire anybody. It's not a good. It's not. Me- it's not a positive story. It's a tragedy. It's sad. It yeah. sucks. It also once again takes it. It, it also deviates from the original part of the the Joker mythos. There is no status quo. At the end of the day, everything is worse for everybody. Yep. Yeah. And it, yeah, nobody got away with anything because nobody was trying to. It's a story of a fucked up man in a fucked up world who basically goes down a downward spiral and in his quest in going all the way to the bottom has unintentionally or otherwise have created an avatar, a symbol for the scum of Gotham City. Yeah, because let's be honest, the guy who shot Thomas Wayne was not was trying just, to make a statement. He was just looking to kill someone that he saw as the, basically the source of his problems. Random rich man, fuck you. Fuck your wife too. I'm going to leave the kid behind though. I'm not that heartless. Yeah, really, because... Really, man? Let's, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, let's hope nothing ever happens to that child of Thomas Wayne. Also, I just realized, that's Joe Chill. Maybe. That yeah, might maybe. as well be Joe Chill. And maybe. And maybe. Or it could be a different be Joe. Maybe it's Jack Napier. Maybe. It's just literally... Like, that is the hilarious part though. This, mo- this Joker is... Funny thing, though, because it was really... And what's co- Bruce Wayne going to remember? He's going to remember someone a in clown. a clown. Hilariously, in this movie, the Joker is as far away from Batman as he could possibly be because the creation of Batman is still the responsibility of the Joker, ironically enough. It is both as far as it could be and as, and close, as close as it as could could be. be too. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. The, the, the joke, just like the Batman, again, going back to my earlier point, Basically proving that the Joker can be anybody, even someone as messed up as Arthur Fleck. Does or maybe someone like the random dude who shot a Bruce Wayne's parents. He could be the Joker if he wanted to. Question. He was trying to be, I think. Wasn't there a comic of Superman who takes that point and belittles the Joker for it? Oh, yeah. Hilariously so. Like, doesn't he, like, chat on, like, there's nothing special about you, Joker. 
You're just another dude. You have so many different interpretations. So many people can be you that you're so ununique. Yeah. That you're so irrelevant. I don't remember the exact name, but the Joker tried to put some bombs in the city. Superman being Superman. fucking Superman took care of it immediately. And the Joker goes on a diatribe complaining how Superman is boring. And while he's doing this... Panel to panel, the Joker changes styles. Animated Joker, movie Joker, Heath Ledger Joker, original cartoon Joker, original live action Joker. Like the, the yep. artist goes out of his way to draw the Joker in many different faces. And then Superman basically breaks him down, going, like, You can try to change yourself where you want to, but at the end of the day, you're just a crazy psychopath trying to make everybody miserable. Also, you're not funny. No, how dare you? He's basically talking shit to Joker, going, You're not funny, so the only way you can make yourself laugh is by hogging the spotlight. Fuck Good. you, you're going back to Arkham. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, you guys have already and heard that's why my... Superman doesn't right, work Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Yeah, you Last guys... thoughts is A on Joker. Oh, you guys already heard my thoughts on the Joker. Like I thought I know that I knew the point of this movie. I understand what I understood what it was doing. That's why I find this movie brilliant, because how else are you going to interpret or how else are you going to humanize the character of the Joker? Angel, last thoughts. Same here. Honestly, as opposed to poor Arthur, all I have is positive thoughts. It's a genuinely good movie. It's a sad, brutal tragedy. And it's a movie that points out the harsh reality of the people, of the of those who would worship somebody the likes of Joker. You're not supposed to. Joker is, at best, a tragic character. In no way, shape, or form does it justify the horrible things done by the people who follow his image. You can't eat the rich because you're just going to get indigestion. Yep. And as far as I can tell, uh, this was a pretty damn good movie. It got me... Tense as all hell. This is definitely not something that's going to inspire incels and all these guys who think that, oh my God, these people are going to take over. No, they're too fucking weakly to actually try to fucking follow the Joker's manifesto because there is no manifesto. Remember, you have to be funny to be a comedian. Yep. And at the end of the day, this was a very, very intense film and people are going to praise it for its artistry. And they're going to shit on it because they think something that's completely not there. But as far as I'm concerned, I just had a good time in the theaters. Yeah, me too. With that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. Thank you for listening in. And, of course, continue to follow us on Facebook.com slash TheBravestFuck, Twitter.com slash TheBravestFuck13, Instagram.com slash TheBravestFuck online. And, of course, subscribe, hit thumbs up, give us a review, hit the notification bell on YouTube.com slash TheBravestFuck, home of the Black Files, Los Amigos Play, and the TheBravestFuck. Yay. Thank you very much for listening in to the Uncensored Interview and Review Podcast of the Ravens Flock. This has been The Black Files. And, and all you have to do... Out.